mean, mm -hmm. exactly what it is, but you know, so you're not going to have a quarter acre lot and apply for no. That's exactly right. That would be the that, that would be the stuff. And that is not uncommon again to have this type of use to have it. Mm -hmm. Well, you want to, and you want to have it large enough that you can plan the site, you know, you have a well-planned site. And, it, and it, again, I think Steve uh, made another good point about um, trying to create a, like a pedestrian environment. So, you know, you're probably going to have that because the nature of the property they be up near the street, but that, that makes it good for people to be able to walk, walk into the right. business center and so on. And it may, for those, uh, not that it doesn't enhance everybody's life, quality of life, but for those to whom those are exceedingly critical issues, mm -hmm. uh, myself being one of them, I would, I would want that to be part of, and there's no reason it shouldn't be, it would enhance any development mm -hmm. that goes on, mm -hmm. and also keep the neighborhood feeling. For what they developed, so I don't think that's I don't think that's uh, the in any way an opposite or a lack of enhancement to any parcel that would be developed in the right. Um I mean, if the board is, I, I, let me go back a step. I, I want to make sure I understand exactly where we are. Also, um, Meg, you may have to answer this question. <laughs> Mayor. Mayor, Mayor. Oh, Mayor, 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 right. Um, the notice for the hearing next week, was it for two local laws or was it for the third local law creating the CS1? Just the two. Okay. That's fine. Uh, uh, no, I just... Um, which two? It's the OBH which and the, and the uh, place of worship, which means that if the hearing is held and you adopt both of those local laws, that nothing would... Nothing would change on uh, on Greenwich Avenue because it's all CS one. I uh, see it. Correct. It's still C. It would remain CS until you do something else. But we could also, in the near future, set the public. You could absolutely CS one and take care of this and be absolutely, absolutely. Well, I think obviously though, there's a few issues there that you've thrown out tonight that we have to resolve. Right. Well, I, I want to check. Yeah, I'm going to check against the architectural. Provisions because I know that they they cover almost everything. Mm -hmm. But as Kyle said, the things that we brought up <coughs> are more expansive rather than restrictive. Anyway, so. Oh yeah, the, the whole <coughs> idea, Don, is, is to respond to the whole discussion about right. more flexibility to make it more attractive for development. That's and um, that was that's the basic reason for the idea of multiple dwelling. But for the media, it's from High Street out to the highway right. that we're discussing being the um, Not all the way out to uh, Cloud. To Cloud. To Cloud. Yeah. Excuse me. That's a lot of music. Pretty close. Yeah. Or, or uh, possibly to the edge of Steve's property, as you were talking about earlier, well, making that, that property along Cloud's DS. The corner parcel. The corner parcel. Yeah. Your parcel. Yeah. What do you need to listen to? Oh, um, probably. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know. If it's, if it's been, I mean, I was gonna just at, at the end of that question, I was gonna say that one of the things that we could do is just try to assemble this discussion into a draft of a provision, um, and possibly try to. Illustrate maybe bring some illustrations of what some of the, you know some higher density might look like. It's hard. It's hard um, to illustrate density sometimes uh, when you have parcels that are, are um, physically difficult because if you look at how much of it might remain open, the density gets lower. In other words, if you, it, if the net density might be higher. It might look like it's very dense. It may not be. You know. But I, but that was what I was going to suggest pending whatever else comes out of this discussion. I, I had a uh, question. Um, I don't think I'm alone in, in, in this. Um, you, there was talk of the floodplain and the cost of development and, and the disincentive to put commercial property in there. Uh, with the new floodplain mapping, insurance has become a very limiting consideration in terms of commercial development. That said, it seems to me, as, as Kyle and, and Mal point out, you want to make it as easy 
for people to develop, not harder. Um, perhaps there should be some reconsideration of the architectural district considerations with parking along that strip because the, the cost of developing is already militating uh, against putting uh, commercial activity in there. And so you want to try to make it as attractive to a commercial developer as possible. And currently the architectural uh, requirements uh, really are, are quite a disincentive to put a, a commercial property there. You only have to look back to uh, the, the battle that CBS went through, and that was basically over parking and, and whether or not it was going to be front or back. So, it, you know, I'd, I'd throw it out there. I'd, I'd be curious to hear what the board and, and what uh, other observers here have to say. Uh, it seems to me it's a, it's a really important uh, aspect to look at in redoing this. Uh, in response, uh, I know that your perspective may be that CBS is about parking, but CBS is more about a box store on Main Street and Main Street. That's not even the point. That may not be your point, so I'll be asking my response to doing it. Uh, the question of the maintenance of the character of the intimacy of the core of the village, I think, is not violated with the suggestions that the board and you are talking about right now. And I think that uh, the way that you expand the use and make it more viable to people and balance that with maintaining the character of the community is exactly what we've been talking about here. And I think it's very constructive for the village. I think it's healthier for the village yeah. as a whole. And I think if you try to uh, if you try to disavow that concept by only taking half of it, it becomes unbalanced. I, I, I don't understand what you're saying. If you're saying get rid of the architectural design, that's not what I'm saying. Fun, that's then not what I'm I saying. think that you lose half of the package that makes it so viable and constructive to be embraced by all facets of the community, as opposed to making it into a uh, confrontational thing. If you're talking about Greenwich Avenue is one thing. I think if you're talking about the impacts of wetlands, you're absolutely correct, but there are a lot of wetlands. You know, one of the reasons accountability is such a problem is because it was, it was built in the middle of a wetland. And of course the building started the thing. So that you need to be able to take into account the, the people who own those properties know it's wet. They know it's wet. And I, I, I realize that the uh, insurance and the remapping that they think even The whole point that I was making, Marcia, is, is not uh, a, a question of principle, it's a question of economic viability. I understand what you're saying. That's your, I understand and, that that and, is your and, perspective. And that unless it's economically viable, nothing is going to happen there at all, and it will just remain fallow. I understand that. Are you saying that, just that you believe that maybe there are certain aspects of that that need to be reviewed at the same time? Exactly. Exactly. If if you, what I'm saying is, you're it, not it, saying to get rid of the whole the, the uh, process of architectural design. No, I'm. And there might be one aspect within that yes. that is, that is uh, limiting the, um, development. Absolutely. What what I'm saying is, if you're going to reconsider the zoning and changing it to CS, that perhaps there are changes within the architectural um, determinants that might make it more economically viable to develop that there are certain requirements now that are disincentives to invest. I'm not, I'm not even saying that the, the deal that I have is going to uh, materialize because I haven't heard from the people for five months since they gave me a deposit. But the, uh, the, the people, the developers expecting to uh, get a lease from a grocery store chain. And I think that uh, parking in the back would be an impediment. And maybe that's why they can't get a tent because maybe they know that the architectural um, uh, review dis uh, district right. and the parking issues. So uh, I don't believe that you would ever get a grocery store on, on my four acres and put all the parking in the back. It's not, not going to do it. No. They want the parking in front of the grocery store. So uh, all I can add is that I don't know enough <coughs> about that particular issue to so make a decision one way or another. I definitely want to hear the planning board perspective. But I can say we never lose anything by having the conversation, discussing things like that. So I think it's valid to bring up. It's a it's a difficult pro uh, question uh, because um, I know that most of the large, it's a supermarket type of development, 
you know, large retail chains, they want park. They have their own guidelines, and they want parking. And um, at the same time, you're dealing with the issue of, you know, preserving or protecting a particular character or quality.